Welcome sa ating channel mga kaibigan at nandito tayo ngayon para pag-usapan kung ano ba ang mas effective. Is it going for an air cooler or liquid cooling system? Kasi ang uh, gusto kong ipakita sa inyo ngayon mga kaibigan is the topic na ano ba ang mas maganda in real world performance. Where meron tayong casing dito ngayon na restricted ang kanyang airflow, hindi masyadong maganda yung airflow. Uh, this will represent those users na hindi mesh front yung kanilang chassis. At the same time, dito naman sa kabila, we have here the high airflow casing. So, this will represent those guys na may higher possibility that they can have a higher airflow lalong-lalong na kung yung buong harap ng kanilang casing is mesh. So, we have here uh, the same components, processor, motherboard, uh, fans na ginamit, same din lahat ang ginamit natin between the comparison of each coolers. Kung baga, hindi tayo nagbago. Kaya makikita nyo po na sa video natin na to, ipapakita ko hindi lang po yung bar graphs, even the monitoring graphs, ipapakita ko sa inyo mga kaibigan as we proceed with the video para you will have a transparent reference na lahat ng mga pinapakita natin sa mga bar graph is same as what we have gathered data dun sa monitoring lag. Kasi in every time, in every seconds na ginawa natin itong benchmark na itong mga kaibigan, we really recorded everything. Even the ambient temperature and even the time na magpapalit tayo or magsusap tayo ng coolers, we even replace thermal paste and each coolers in each time na i -re -re plug natin sila. And every coolers na meron tayo dito is uh, around 3 times or 4 times natin silang i -re -re plug for us to eradicate yung human error na possibility during the testing period. So ayun mga kaibigan, feel free to subscribe. Lilinawin na natin kung alin ba ang mas effective na cooler dito sa Pilipinas. That is the reason why this benchmark is done with a climate controlled temperature. Okay, so before we will proceed to the benchmark, between this kind of scenario of having a low airflow chassis and high airflow chassis, you should know mga kaibigan that before we did this testing, lahat po ng internet connection disconnect natin para walang update na mangyayari during the benchmarking period. So if there are things na mangyayari like Windows updates sa background that may affect the performance or the accuracy of our testing. At the same time, all of the BIOS, the uh, fan curves, the uh, voltage, LLC, uh, frequency are all set to static para walang variation na mangyayari during the testing period. Now let's go to the first phase of testing. Dito makikita natin mga kaibigan that we are using now the low airflow chassis which is restricted yung kanyang airflow lalong lalo na sa front. And dito makikita natin na very unsatisfactory yung ating result na nakuha. Having this kind of difference between AIO and air coolers is sobrang minimal na variation. It will not justify that the AIO is better than the other or the air cooler is better than the other uh, coolers na na-present natin dito sa ating bar graph. Kung makikita natin mga kaibigan, what we can only justify in here under this kind of conditions na restricted ang airflow, AIO can dominate over all of the other coolers with a cooler master. A good AIO can win. But based on the graph, makikita din natin na hindi nagpe-perform yung dalawang air cooler natin na deep cool GTA and deep cool assassin 3 and only one air cooler is at the better side which is uh, dominated by two AIOs the NZXT and the cooler master so therefore we can conclude mga kaibigan that AIO will perform better than the air coolers kung restricted ang airflow dahil nga kung titinan naman talaga natin mga kaibigan airflow is mababa restricted and air cooler yung uh, cooling solution so ibig sabihin dependent siya dun sa airflow dahil nga air air yung kumbaga pinaka uh, major player, major factor kung bakit napapalamig ng air cooler ang CPU. Unlike with the liquid cooling solutions or AIO that they are using coolant. Pero at least unlike air coolers na very dependent talaga sila sa cold air intake ng isang chassis. Now let's proceed to the part how we gather those kind of data sa ating bar graph. And dito pinapakita ng Deep Cool Assassin 3 is stable at 85 degrees Celsius sometimes dropping at 84 and uh, most of the time nag stay lang siya sa 85 degrees Celsius justified na talagang 85 degrees Celsius talaga ang magiging average na temperature ng ating Deep Cool Assassin 3 moving on to the AIO 
makikita din natin that 84 degrees Celsius is commonly the part where uh, nag stay or nag steady yung NZXT. And then uh, there are some uh, fluctuations going 85 degrees Celsius, pero most of the time, it's at 84 degrees Celsius or sometimes dropping at 83. Now, therefore, the average is 84 degrees Celsius. Going on to the Cooler Master ML240R, dito naman, it's most of the time 83 degrees Celsius. And then sometimes going 82 degrees Celsius, pero 90% of the time, it is always at 83 degrees Celsius. Justified na 83 degree Celsius talaga yung Cooler Master. Lastly, the NOC 2Y12A. Dito medyo nagkakaroon ng kumbaga 50-50. Sometimes it's 84 degrees Celsius. Sometimes it's 83 degrees Celsius. Pero when we look closer at the graph and let's look at the bigger picture, most of the times talaga is nasa 84 degrees Celsius siya. Pero since rounded off ang ating uh, temperature, we still rounded it off to an 84 degrees Celsius. It's a bit unfair kung titignan natin mga kaibigan. Pero the part, na masyadong magalaw yung kanyang uh, temperature spiking to 84 degrees Celsius from time to time that gives us the reason that NOC 2 is still therefore at an 84 degrees Celsius hotter than the cooler master na nasa 83 degrees Celsius pero sometimes dropping to 82 and that is so unfair kung sasabihin kung 83 degrees Celsius din yung NOC 2 kung from time to time naman talaga is nasa 84 degrees Celsius siya or not only from time to time but most of the time nasa 84 degrees Celsius siya over the cooler master na minsan yung cooler master nga nagdadrop pa sa 82 degrees Celsius. Now, if this case will not justify that AIO is better than air cooler on this kind of uh, scenario na restricted ang airflow, let's move on to the part where we put both coolers on extreme conditions. Since NOC 2 and cooler master are the one na merong uh, very close match dun sa ating ginawang uh, thermal uh, testing, let's go to the extreme conditions where restricted ang airflow And then we try to get the highest ambient temperature that we can have which is ang ginawa ko po mga kaibigan is close ko lahat ng pintuan and then uh, it's around 12 pm ng tanghali until 3 pm and did a 4 hours stress test para makita talaga natin when will those coolers reach their very steady state kumbaga hindi talaga sila magbabago it's very uh, kumbaga may stack talaga sila at that kind of uh, scenario And all of the coolers that tinest din natin kanina, ganyan din po natin tinest. We really wait up to the point na magiging steady talaga yung temperature before we will gather data. That what makes this uh, testing coolers very rigorous natin talagang ginawa mga kaibigan. And based on the bar graph, makikita natin mga kaibigan that the cooler master is at 42 degrees Celsius in terms of idle temperature. Wala tayong ginagawa. Pero that will not give us uh, kumbaga, real world experience dahil you, if you will be using your computer automatically may gagawin at may gagawin ka sa iyong computer it's either magbabrowse ka lang or kahit pa paano uh, mag game ka or there is a heavy multitasking most of the times nahahawakan mo yung computer mo and here we can see that the stress test kumbaga on extreme conditions makikita natin that there is now 2 degrees Celsius apart comparing the AIO versus the air cooler now how did we able to have those kind of data dito ngayon titinan natin yung ating stress test na ginawa and here makikita natin mga kaibigan that there are major fluctuations na nangyayari sa air cooler makikita natin that there are cases na nagda-drop din naman yung temperature niya at 85 degrees Celsius which is the very stable temperature ng cooler master na 85 degrees Celsius and there are minimal fluctuations going to 86 pero most of the time talaga nasa 85 siya pero when you look at the NOC 2 ah, makikita mo that there are major fluctuations na nangyayari going to 87, going to 86, going to 85, and then most of the times, nasa 87 siya. Ito talaga ang magiging final na average temperature natin, which is 87 degrees Celsius. And that is way hotter than the AIO. Now, will these things may change kung ang chassis na gagamitin na natin is high airflow chassis? Which is on theory, the higher the airflow, the better the air cooler will perform. Now let's move on to the high airflow chassis. And dito makikita natin mga kaibigan that the cooler master is still the good AIO performing with the least temperature, pinakamababang temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. Pero we cannot skip the part that the NOC 2 and Deep Cool Assassin 3 is now next to the cooler master ML240R which is at 79 degrees Celsius. 
and yung NZXT na ang sumunod at saka yung XPG Levante at 81 and 82 degree Celsius and having that deep cool GTA air cooler at a worst performance of 83 degree Celsius. Ngayon dito natin makikita the advantage of having a high airflow chassis pagdating sa air cooler. If we just remember mga kaibigan kanina, nakita natin that uh, hindi ganun kaganda yung variation. And it's just a very minimal variation ang nakikita natin between uh, those coolers dun sa restricted airflow. Kasi nga hindi mo talaga mapipicture out. That is why most of the times when they are trying to benchmark uh, coolers, they will be performing that in a test bench para walang ibang factors na makakapekto dun sa result. Pero since ang topic natin ngayon mga kaibigan is how air cooling and liquid cooling performs sa ating climate dito sa Pilipinas at the same time in real world performance where those coolers are inside the chassis kaya ginagawa natin tong low airflow versus high airflow setup sa pagtest natin ng AIO versus air cooling solutions now let's go back to the graph I love what I see that the AIO is the best uh, go-to cooler in both uh, scenario mapa airflow man yan or uh, low airflow na chassis pero tingnan natin na yung Deep Cool Assassin 3 and Noctua and dito natin makikita that the air cooling solutions of Deep Cool and Noctua is nag drop ng around 5 and 6 degree Celsius patunay yan mga kaibigan that airflow is a must if you want to go for an air cooling solutions dahil dito nakita natin na malaki ang impact talaga niya sa air cooler compared to the other AIOs na around 3 degree Celsius and 2 degree Celsius or 4 degree Celsius lang yung uh, drain up ng uh, temperature and uh, with a deep cool GTA air cooler nakita din natin na nag drop din ng temperature pero it's not as good with the other air coolers dahil ngayon deep cool GTA mga kaibigan it comes with this very good uh, structure direct heat pipes and uh, other features pero since the fact na meron lang siyang single fan compared to the other uh, coolers na deep cool assassin at saka yung U12A, medyo hindi niya masyadong na take advantage yung pagtaas ng airflow dito sa ating chassis. Kasi nga budget air cooler lang siya that lacks the features to compete with even a brand new in the industry AIO manufacturers. Now of course we cannot talk about those graphs kung hindi rin natin makikita yung mismong monitoring test. How the cooler master still performs at a very stable temperature of 78 degrees Celsius compared sa Noctua at a 79 degrees Celsius and from time to time nag spike pa siya pero still uh, most of the times naman is nasa 79 degrees Celsius siya so it's enough to justify that the Noctua is at a 79 degrees Celsius and dito natin makikita mga kaibigan that if we can stay longer for a day or two na i-stress test na natin talaga to which is uh, I think uh, very unrealistic naman na the Noctua may even reach as a stable state of temperature na 80 degree Celsius over the cooler master. Okay, so that's it mga kaibigan. It's actually one of the hardest benchmark that I've done. Kaya pala sobrang bibihira ang gumagawa ng AIO versus uh, air cooler na uh, comparison dahil uh, you really need to test and uh, talagang dadanak talaga yung pawis mo. Bihira sa mga tropical countries yun kasi Sobrang pagpapawisan ka talaga sa pagbabantay mo kasi kailangan mong bantayan, kailangan mong i-monitor. Yung uh, room temperature, yan, kailangan mong bantayan from time to time. Well anyway, let's proceed to the conclusion. If you have this kind of good AIO versus a good air cooler, AIO is still the winner dito sa ating bansa which is tropical country tayo. And ayun nga, benchmark won't lie. AIO is winner on both chassis. A good AIO is winner over a good air cooler. And nakita na rin naman natin on the extreme uh, scenario which is uh, pinataas natin yung ambient temperature and at a worst case scenario dun natin na emphasize na mas maganda talaga yung AIO pero we cannot deny the fact that air cooler can go head to head with an AIO at a price of much cheaper compared sa AIO natin it is worth 5k plus yung uh, cooler master the NZXT is 10k plus even the XPG Levante and etong pinaka flagship na air cooler is just at a price point of 4000 plus even the Deep Cool Assassin 
So doon pa lang makikita natin mga kaibigan that in terms of price to performance ratio, doon naman pumapalag ang air cooler. One concern nga lang talaga lagi pagdating sa air cooler is isa pa yung kanyang clearance. Pero ayun, it will be for later discussion kasi hindi natin kayang ipagsiksik lahat ang mga usapang AIO versus air cooler. Ang pinagfokusan muna ng topic natin ngayon is how effective these cooling solutions in different kind of scenario between a uh, high airflow chassis and a low airflow chassis. Yun muna yung topic natin and of course the real world performance what will you expect? Kasi nga kadalasan ng mga pinalabas natin mga uh, benchmark before or comparison before is ginagawa natin on a test bench. And even other tech reviews, yun din po yung ginagawa nila. Kasi nga we are just isolating the comparison between each coolers. Pero for now, iba. Because we are not just talking about how will these coolers perform individually or the cooler itself. Pero how will these coolers perform inside the casing, yun yung mas naipakita natin ngayon dito sa AIO versus air cooler. So, iba talaga if a benchmark is done within a tropical country. So, kung may mga gusto pa kayong i-input mga kaibigan, feel free to comment down below. And of course, gusto nyo na idagdag on our next reviews, feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe dahil marami pa po itong kasunod and syempre, maraming mga darating na products dahil nandyan na po yung Intel 10th Gen Ryzen uh, 4000 series 5500 motherboards, maraming darating, chairs, secret lab, yan, darating lahat yung mga yan in the coming month or after this lockdown. So keep posted mga kaibigan, feel free to subscribe, and yes, thank you so much.